All right, you ready? Oopsies. Oh, no. Oh, there's a brother stash already. I just went out of the instance. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Don't fuck me like that. Oh, okay. Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here and it's time to learn about Heist. Now as I take a sip of my berry smoothie here, I'm gonna do so just uh, before we get right into things. I'm gonna... I'm gonna just quickly talk about the elephant in the room of um... Why would I run the heists? This is a question I get all the time. Uh, a lot of you who have played Heist League and maybe uh, the next league after that ritual as well You've tried a bit of heist and you haven't really enjoyed it. It's a bit slower gameplay, that sort of thing. You know, you kind of want to go back to your delirious maps or all that sort of thing. Um, but uh, all I can really say is I was... I used to be the same. I used to really, really hate heist. And I tried it out this league with all of the additions to leveling of rogues a lot quicker. Uh, and uh, heist being on the map device itself and being able to grind maps and kind of... Um, split up your heist grinding with some map grinding as well. Doing ultimatums in those maps. Um, I can now safely say that heist number one is a lot more enjoyable than it used to be if you know a few of the techniques and tips that I'm going to give you today. Uh, number two, it can make you a ton of money. Um, and look, number three, yeah, the quality of life, as I talked about with rogues, it's just it's just that much nicer. So how do I make so much money in heist? Um, I've been making upwards of 20 exalted orbs a a day uh, with heist and we're saying a day is about eight hours eight hours of gameplay and that sort of thing um, which is pretty good you know that's that's about like 200 chaos an hour type of thing um, which you know it, it's not the highest end that you can make if you have some pretty insane investment but this is pretty low investment with everything that we're doing so there's kind of a two-pronged approach and you can take uh, or use um, or not use anything that I'm talking about here. Uh, you can farm just maps just for heists and sell the heists, or you can kind of just buy heists and run them yourself and don't go into maps at all. It's totally up to you. But first of all, we're going to talk about the map device. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is heists on the map device here. Now, there is a modifier uh, that you can run, a Zana modifier, that costs six chaos. There's six chaos, you might think, well, that's a lot to be running per map. Six chaos per heist on a map, and an area contains two additional smugglers caches. Now, uh, right off the bat, if you consider that some of the top end heists, such as deception heists, go for nine to ten chaos each, um, and you're at least getting two uh, the smugglers caches, so at least two uh, contracts, you know, you're going to be making this back. You know, some of the the cheaper ones are going to be selling for you know only about three chaos each. But just in the heists themselves, in the in the contracts you're going to be dropping, you're making the money straight back if you just want to sell them. Then you're dropping a bunch of rogues markers. Then you're also dropping blueprints every now and then. And you're also going to be running all of your maps in Lyra Arthane. So right down here, Lyra Arthane, what you're at least going to be wanting is Secret Stash to have a 10% chance to contain a smuggler's cash, an extra 10%. So this brings it up to about 1 in 5, just under 1 in 5 maps. You're going to be having three uh, smugglers caches instead of two in your maps. And then also inside job, meaning smugglers caches in areas have a 100% increased chance to drop uh, blueprints, and blueprints that drop in areas have a 10% chance to be fully revealed. Now, crunching the numbers, I've said, uh, I found that about every three to four maps, you're going to be getting a blueprint. So that means about every 30 to 40 maps, you're going to be getting a uh, blueprint that drops fully revealed. Now, I've actually been running, I, I've, I've probably run upwards of 100 maps in Lyra Arthane, and I have not dropped a fully revealed blueprint yet. Now, that's, you know, uh, that sucks to be me, right? But that's, I, I, I've been unlucky with that. Um, and uh, I've still made insane profits. So dropping a fully revealed blueprint is just going to net you even more profits. You don't have to waste your uh, rogues markers to un uh, unreveal things, or sorry, reveal things on that blueprint. And we'll talk about all of the revealing and blueprints and contracts a little bit later in the video. Uh, but basically, you chuck a map in, you run the map, you open the smugglers' caches, you kill the boss just to get some map completion uh, and try and drop some more maps to run more Lyra Arthane. Uh, what I would suggest to sustain the maps is just have your four stones socketed in here, or, you know, three stones and then, you know, one stone in each of the others. You can see here that 
if I run a uh, tier 14 to 16 map in Lyra Arthane, I'm going to only be dropping Lyra Arthane maps uh, back in tier 14 to 16. And basically, I can just sustain maps super, super easy just doing this, right? And having two watchstones everywhere else. So that's super, super nice, right? Um, now, the other big thing about this is, uh, yeah, you can sell your rogues markers. It's around 50,000 rogues markers for one exalted orb, and you're getting about 50,000 rogue markers every 30 maps, I would say. So every 30 maps, you can, you know, sell the rogues markers for an extra exalted orb, uh, which is definitely going to pay back for the cost of, uh, of running those maps, you know. Uh, if you're running uh, 6 chaos, uh, 30 maps, 180 chaos, you know, that's just over an exalted orb, so you're almost paying back this cost just with the rogues markers you're definitely paying back this cost just with the contracts you're dropping and then any blueprints everything like that uh, on top of that is what you're getting now second part is the heists themselves now as you can see here i have a ton of heists i have not bought a single heist or blueprint and i've been running so many of these and i just keep getting more and more back just because of how overpowered the Lyra Arthane uh, inside job and secret stash is, right? So let's go to the Rogue Harbor here. Uh, and to go to the Rogue Harbor, Harbor, you just right click on any Rogue's marker in any kind of town area and it'll bring you to the Rogue's Harbor. Now, right off the bat, uh, there are two things that you can run. For those of you who don't know Heist, I'm just gonna quickly, just for a couple of minutes, talk about them. There are uh, contracts and blueprints. Contracts are as easy as rolling them. Uh, going over here to Adja, preparing a heist, talking to Adja, uh, choosing who you want to bring on the heist. Vidiri is very, very good. So, uh, and then basically you run the heist. Uh, you know, let's quickly do a heist right here with Vindiri, right? So you run the heist, uh, and this is a trap disarmament. So this is kind of like a B tier heist, and I'll quickly talk about, you know, the best heists and the worst heists. But basically every contract that you run is going to net you a profit because just of how good they are. So jumping in here, we can see that uh, we can jump through here. There's a lot of doors, and that's why a lot of people don't like uh, don't like heists. Uh, and we can choose uh, what rewards we want to open and what rewards we don't. Now I see up ahead, we've got some Legion and we've got some Breach. That's going to be better than uh, taking this armor one over here. So let's skip the armor one, and let's go into the Legion and Breach. Now, as I said before, rogues themselves, uh, they take a lot quicker time to level up and everything like that uh, than they used to. So um, instead of running like, uh, you know, 20 heists with a rogue, you're running about five heists to get them to the max level. Five, five to six type of thing, uh, which is insane. It's absolutely insane um, speed at leveling everything up, and it just makes heist that much nicer. Um, so with Vindiri here, um, I'm just taking him through. Uh, uh, proccing these two little things and we can see the alert level you want to try and keep the alert level uh, below the top now there's a lot of kind of other massive stats that I uh, could or strats that I could talk about of like you know getting a bunch of uh, reduced alert level and opening every single box but you know if you want to do it that way you definitely can uh, but you don't have to and you're still gonna net a profit right I'm all about on this channel I'm all about you don't need to min-max, you can still make tons of money just playing the game casually. Um, I play the game extremely inefficiently and I still make so much money. I could be making so much more if I played more efficiently, right? So I've opened a few boxes. If I open another box, it's actually going to put my alert level above the top. Uh, so what I could actually do is open that and then imminent lockdown, but I can open this before that timer goes down. I can jump over here uh, and then I can go and collect this. Now, every, uh, every contract that you run is going to net you uh, some sort of sellable uh, thing at the, uh, at the end. So if you get out with this, you can go and talk uh, to Faustus in the Rogue's Harbor and sell it to him. Uh, and that means that you're going to get a bunch of Rogue's Markers back. So it basically means you run, you know, 10 to 20. <laughs> well, then if you die, you lose your things, but uh, you don't want to do that. But as you can see, if I got out there, uh, I would have been able to sell that thing and get some Rogue's Markers. And then the second thing that we can uh, look at is a blueprint, right? Now, blueprints, uh, you first of all have to reveal blueprints. So you can run just with one wing. And this one is a uh, thieves, trinkets, or currency, which is relatively good at the end here. And you can reveal things. Or you could spend more markers to reveal more wings. Now, I don't have many markers here because I just finished up a big, uh, a big whole run of everything. Um, but uh, you can re reveal some more stuff and then run these. Now, as I said, uh, in the Lyra Arthane, there is a 10% chance for blueprints that drop to be fully revealed, which means that every single thing here that's red uh, and all of the things in here are going to be fully revealed, meaning you can just uh, take it out, jump over here, uh, go to the planning room, and choose the uh, members that you want to bring with you. All right? Now, 
let's talk first about what is the best profit on your contracts and then the best profit on your blueprints. Contracts themselves, the top three contracts are deception, uh, which is S tier, and then A tier is going to be lock picking and demolition. Now, deception is so good because of how fast it is to run, how many stacked decks you get out of it, and also you run deception with Gianna. Now, Gianna has a really, really nice perk. Uh, that means that you discover a blueprint, blueprint reveal upon completion of a heist contract mission. So every heist contract you complete with Gianna, that means that when you reveal uh, some things with, uh, um, with Gianna here on some blueprints, you get a 40% discount on Rogue's Markers. So you can see here, it costs me 2300 um, Rogue's Markers to reveal this wing here. But if I wasn't revealing with Gianna, it would cost me uh, almost 4000 So you can see here that it's way, way, way better to reveal with Gianna. Now, I ran out of deception. I don't have any more Gianna reveals here, but you can see how strong that is. That being said as well, uh, you can run Deception. Basically, uh, it's the quickest one to run. You get a bunch of stacked decks from Deceptions themselves, uh, and stacked decks sell for about 2 chaos a pop, or you can open them yourselves. I've opened them myself, and I've netted a profit every single time I've opened stacked decks. I've gotten uh, an Unrequited Love Div card, I've gotten a Brother's Stash, I've gotten a bunch of other like Void cards and everything like that that have turned into some really amazing stuff, right? Uh, so... All I can say is Deception, S tier. That's why they go for 10 Chaos uh, or up. Um, and uh, they're very, very difficult to buy as well, but extremely good profit. Now, the other two are Lockpicking and Demolition. Now, Lockpicking is really good because you get a bunch of currency from it. You get a bunch of currency chests. And Demolition is really good because you uh, just get a bunch of like... Uh, um, uh, well, let me let me just uh, show you here. You get a bunch of uh, where's demolition, blight and metamorph and delirium stuff, and also Vindiri is the best to take for demolition, and he can have a chance of doubling all of this as well, which is really nice. So I am going to put a link down below to this right here. This is a sheet that basically outlines everything on heist, and it's as up to date as you can get. And we'll talk about the rogues equipment very soon as well. But you can see over here. Um, you can get some currency through things like agility, you can get currency through counter thaumaturgy, but lockpicking is the best uh, because you can get fragments as well, and in fragments in high tier maps, you're going to be netting like a fragment of, uh, like a shaper fragment or an elder fragment almost every chest that you open right here, which is extremely strong. Now, as I said, Deception with Gianna, level 5, you can take her into here and you get div cards, Harbinger, but you get a bunch of div cards as well, which is extremely, extremely strong, which is very, very, very nice, right? Um, so that's all I'm really going to say here uh, about all of this. Everything is good to run, though. You can see here, in almost everything here, uh, fossils are really good, currency is really good, gems are even pretty good, uh, Metamorph Blight is really amazing, uh, Div Cards, Breach, Legion, they, these are all good. And then things like weapons or accessories, you can drop Doctor Cards from accessories, which I've done a couple of times, which is pretty amazing. Um, all of it's really, really good, but uh, if you're going to be running up for those blueprints, then Gianna is the best one to take in your, uh, uh, in, in these ones right here, which is super, super, super tasty. All right, uh, enough talk about that. Uh, we're gonna talk about Rogue Gear. Now, I'm not going to be stating the best of the best in slots to be taking for your Rogues, because let's face it, most of you who are watching this video, like myself, don't want to invest crazy, like, like 10, 20, 30 exalts in your trinkets or all this kind of stuff for your Rogues. Um, you just kind of want to slap on some good mods for your rogues and everything like that. All I can really say here is this sheet is really, really good to tell you what's best in slot. So say, for example, let's take Gianna. A burst band is really good in the weapon. Cloak is a whisper woven cloak, which is just the best for everyone. A folie brooch is the best for everyone. And then she's got a regicide disguise kit here as well. Now, I can guarantee that if I go to my Gianna, I really don't have all of that at all, you know? But I've focused on... Uh, specific things that these uh, these guys are best at, these rogues are best at. So say for example, as I was talking about Gianna, really good for divination cards, I've got an enamel brooch that just gives a chance to duplicate contained divination cards from divination chests, right? Uh, or, or, or card chests. Um, uh, so, you know, the best thing for you to do is go, okay, let's, let's make an amulet for Isla, right? What is Isla good at? Oh, she can go level five in engineering. What's the best thing in engineering? You know, maybe uniques. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a unique 
uh, amulet for Islic here. Well, let's have a look at cast here. Cast, right? Oh, currency. You know, let's let's go to cast here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, duplicate uh, basic currency here. So just roll them a couple of times and get something that's relatively good for them. As you can see here, I'm I'm really really not. You know, I've got missing slots everywhere, um, and I could be better. Think. Look, don't take Huck anywhere. That's why I've got nothing on Huck. Just don't, just don't take him. Now, the best rogues, I can say, uh, are going to be your Cast uh, and your Vindiri. Now, these two are honestly the best that you can take. Vindiri has a 14% chance to duplicate any conta uh, contents of a heist chest, but he does have more raising of alert level. But coupled with Cast, 40% less alert level from opening reward chests. If you can couple these two together in Blueprints, then you're going to be having a really, really delicious time. So coming to blueprints, that's all I can really say is you're going to be focusing on cast and Vindiri. That's just it. As much as you can on your blueprints, hire them. So let's take this blueprint here. Let's let's see if I can hire them. I will always hire them if I can. So here, look, I can't hire uh, cast because he's only uh, agility level one, but I should probably level him up to agility level three if he can. If you don't know if he can or not, you go over here and you have a look. Oh no, he can only be leveled to level 2, so I'm just going to take Talina, right? However, we've got Demolition, we can take Vendiri, and then here you're definitely going to be taking Tibbs over Huck, right? So we got one of the two, which is, means that uh, this Fossils and Unique's Reward Room, Vindiri is going to have a chance to double these right here, okay? And that's all I can say. Once you once you finish this, uh, you know, you want to have a look here. Let's, yeah, sure, let's confirm the plans here. Uh, that was a pretty bad idea for me to confirm a one-wing blueprint, but I've got a bunch of blueprints here. Um, and then that's basically it. You take uh, you take everyone into the Grand Heist, you run it, uh, have a bit of fun with it, get some currency, uh, and then uh, what I like to do is dump everything in a stash here. You can see here this is a stash, and I've already taken out all of the Divination cards, but this is half a day, half a day of running heists, about four hours of running heists right here, um, and um, there's, there's some crazy currency coming through here. There's about, you know, there's about 10 Exalted Orbs worth of stuff right here uh, that I haven't even sold yet. Plus, uh, I had, I think it was seven exalted orbs of other things that I sold right here. So if I pop that in there, that's about, that's about 2,000, 2,100 chaos right there as well uh, that I did get uh, from that half a day of running heists. So as you can see, that is an amazing way to make currency. Now, do you want to do this? I don't know. A lot of people have said uh, it doesn't matter how much I'm going to get out of running these. I'm never going to do heists because it's so boring. And look, I respect that. All I can say is take a build that's fast, take a build that's uh, either evasive or tanky. Um, you don't really need to be doing crazy amounts of damage, you don't even need to really be killing enemies. So if your DPS is pretty low, you know, just take a fast or a tanky build. Or fast and tanky is the best way, or evasive, fast and evasive. Raider is freaking amazing. Pathfinder is really, really good for flasks to keep that adrenaline quicksilver up. Uh, and then just run your heists and get a bunch of currency to uh, uh, make that new meme build. Speaking of mean builds, right before we finish, uh, I am running a build competition. If you haven't seen the video, it's down below. There's about a week and a half left to go of that build competition. So get your submissions in. Go watch the video. Know what you can submit. I'm not looking for the most overpowered build. I'm looking for the most unique build out there, all right? So if you've got something that you're like, man, this is a cool mechanic that I don't think anyone's playing around with in this game right now. I want to submit my build. Definitely go down. There are prizes to be won. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say. If you like this content, if this helped you at all, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I know everyone says it, but look, it's the best way for me to grow on YouTube and continue doing this full time, which I love doing. Uh, but uh, to pass that threshold of really making this sustainable, uh, we need to bump those numbers up a little bit more. So if you've been lurking, if you've been watching, um, hit that subscribe button, give it a like, hit the notification, hit that bell, and come join me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash thisisbadger. We are leveling a secret new build as of upload today of this video, so come and join us. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I love you all, and until next time, Badger. <sighs> He's out.